morning, everybody. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Hope you guys are all doing well out there today. We got a lot of snow this past weekend and the weekend before. We got 20 inches of snow the weekend before, and this past weekend we got 24 inches of snow. So we have a lot of snow out here. Good morning, Jill. Glad to have you joining me. Hope you're well today and still decluttering like a champ. I'm going to wait and see if we can get a couple more people on here. But I wanted to talk today about how you're spending your winter months. These months can be really um, beneficial and really critical in your preparedness. And um, <laughs> please keep our snow. Yeah, I hear that. Everybody's telling us that. Nobody wants us to send it in their direction. We've got a lot. And we're only a third of the way through our mile and a quarter long lane as far as getting it cleared. We've, we've been stuck back here since Saturday. So makes things rather interesting. But during these months, this is a really great time for us to really tap into um, learning new things and uh, digging into uh, maybe things that we um, enjoy doing, such as gardening. Now, like I mentioned last week, is a great time to start planning your garden and um, just getting your seeds in order, getting your seeds started, and, and those types of things. Additionally, though, there's a lot of other things that we can be doing, so I thought I would touch on that today. Decluttering is one of them, and Jill has been attacking that for a while now, as have I. Uh, we are going through our house and getting rid of all the stuff we don't need um, and downsizing just to make our move uh, easier once our house sells. So, And it's just very liberating and very refreshing. Uh, we all tend to collect things or end up with extra things or be gifted things, you know, handed down things, and sometimes it just gets to be a bit much. So by decluttering, you really make room for a lot of new growth, not only um, in, in your space, but in your mind, too. And I know that sounds funny, but I do not do well when I've, I have clutter around me. I can't function. It just screams at me and distracts me. So that has helped me greatly in being able to uh, just be refreshed. Now, there's a lot of other things we can do. Learning new skills is really important, I feel, in this day and age. Uh, there's a lot of skills and things that get lost over the years, that don't get handed down, that maybe in a lot of people's eyes become useless. But when you look towards a future sometimes that is uncertain, it's really good to have skills that are going to be able to keep you moving forward if things disappear that we are currently used to. So power, um, st food from the grocery stores, all kinds of things like that. Uh, Jill says, in some cases, it is also a way to let go of painful things in the past. Oh, yeah, for sure, Jill. Jill was mentioning about um, decluttering. For sure, we hang on to things sometimes with poor reasoning behind it. And, and sometimes that is something that will set you free great, greatly. And also just traveling through those periods maybe, uh, finding an old journal and, and traveling through that old period and realizing also, Jill, how far you've progressed. I, would, I imagine you'll agree with that. Um, so it can, be, it can be a very liberating thing, decluttering. And um, learning new skills, like I said, is really important. Um, learning how to mill your own flowers, um, you know, using the wheat berries and, and milling flour, um, learning how to make wooden spoons and wooden utensils. Um, that's, you know, they're just all useful. And I don't know about you guys, but we really have the passion to learn how to do all of the old and traditional tools, even the primitive things um, and the skills. Uh, getting out in the woods is really refreshing, too. I got out for a walk on Saturday for a little bit. I'd like to get out on my snowshoes now that we've got a lot of snow. So maybe later today that'll be something that I will venture into. I've been dealing with a little bit of mold exposure, and I'm not sure if it's just the moisture in the air or the snow mold. Which, So I don't know if going outside will be beneficial to me or not, but I'm not going to live afraid, so I'm going to venture out there and see what happens but uh, it's just so beautiful it's just so untouched out here so the other thing is researching information 
I got uh, some of my ideas today from some questions that the audience had mentioned to me, um, how to switch to better flowers um, that are healthier for you and how to convert to non-GMO. So um, researching information popped in my head because I am constantly researching things, whether it's for natural health, um, medicinal herbs, uh, making leather moccasins, uh, learning how to knit something new, whatever. I'm, I'm constantly researching things. Those are just things that popped in my mind. Um, but you can also be out there researching varying ways to address um, a dietary issue, um, how to eat better, and I'm going to touch on that today. But researching information is huge. And guys, we've got such a tool in, in our at our fingertips with the internet. You know, before you used to have to go to the library and look in books and encyclopedias and, and do vast research just on one subject where at our fingertips we can search so fast and get valid information. Now you do need to remember that not everything you read on the internet is true and valid. So you need to make sure that you're finding good sites um, and, and utilizing that material. Also, like I mentioned, planting your garden um, right now is such a good time to be planting your garden. What um, Sometimes you don't realize that there are companion plants that do well next to each other. So you can do companion planting research. You can do research on the types of seeds that work best in your, in your zone, um, what work best in your area, what work best in your soil. You know, there's a... Gardening is, is like a science, so there's a lot to do, delve into. Um, if you're new to gardening, the thing you want to do is just uh, focus on a couple plants, uh, your favorite, your family's favorite plants, and do a little research there and, and find the best seeds for your area and, and map it out, figure out which go well together as far as planting them in close proximity. Some don't do well side by side, so it's really important that you kind of do your research and, and um, follow some good gardening sites, YouTube channels, uh, take some classes. Um, below in the notes you will find a good many resources for gardening and seeds. Uh, my dear friends over at uh, Seeds for Generation, Jason and his family, um, he has a, a full quiver of children and they are such a unique family and really a good, great blessing to us. And their children are involved in doing the, the uh, heirloom seeds. So they uh, offer really good non-GMO heirloom seeds and um, I mentioned the gardening notebook previously. I'll just show you this. This is mine. It's something that you can print out and put in a binder and utilize every year and go back to it. So it's a reprintable ebook. so it's one that keeps on giving and um, I highly recommend that you uh, check that out. It's inexpensive and you can find that by going to Treyer Wilderness um, TGN for the garden notebook. And there's also uh, the Back to Basics garden, Gardening Planner, um, which you can find by going to treyerwilderness.com slash garden planner. There's also um, some other great resources in here. The Plan a Garden is a great um, little app and program on the computer that enables you to uh, plan your garden like on the screen and permaculture and, and aquaculture is, is very much uh, good things to be researching right now. Thanks, Jill. There is a permaculture book in the notes. Um, that was, I did an interview uh, with the author and that was just so much fun. Ginny Black is great. Um, let me see here. Permaculture for the rest of us. So you can find that by going to Jenny Blackmore, uh, treyerwilderness.com slash Jenny Blackmore. And um, the guard, plant a garden you can find by going to treyerwilderness.com slash plant a garden. That is the app that I was referring to. I also have a dear friend, Rick Stone, that has some really great inexpensive classes. And you will find those all listed below. Uh, Deb likes the uh, preserving portion. Yes, me too. That is something that I'm so into. I love preserving our food. And right now, I have got a roast on the wood stove wrapped in bacon. My office smells absolutely amazing. And uh, we have carrots uh, 
that we'll be uh, preparing for dinner tonight that we canned. So it's just so nice to be able to pull those things off your shelf and be able to utilize the things that you put your heart and soul into in, during the summer months. So that's something else you can learn. Um, is learning how to can over the winter months, taking classes. There's all kinds of great classes, which I am so excited to mention. The Trier Wilderness Academy is so close to going live, and I am so excited. I've been putting my heart and soul into that. We will have a Skill of the Month membership that uh, will give you everybody that signs up a uh, monthly skill and it'll walk you through with video as well as handouts and provide you with the new skill of the month every month and that is a membership area where we will also have a forum and uh, community um, access so that everybody can ask their questions and communicate and help one another and I'm really excited about that. We also will have individual classes on specific subjects and I will have a free webinar going out in the next two weeks most likely. I will uh, post uh, information on the sign up of that on the Facebook page. But that will be on um, what does it really look like to live off grid and, and, and what is preparedness. So that will be a great free webinar that I hope you guys will sign up for. And you can go and sign up for our academy. Uh, the doors will be opening soon and you will be one of the first to know about it. You will also get your first month free. So make sure you go to tryourwildernessacademy.com and sign up. Jill also mentioned dehydrating. Yes, dehydrating, preserving uh, with canning. Um, you can preserve your meats by canning and salt curing. There's so many different aspects to uh, preserving our food, freezing our food. I know my in-laws and my, my family used to freeze corn, and, and uh, I know my in-laws do as well. Uh, there's nothing better than uh, green beans out of a, a canning jar. Oh, gosh, I love green beans. So, guys are making me hungry. Not to mention the bacon aroma that's floating through my office. It's a little deadly right now. Um, the other thing that we're going to jump to right now is um, learning natural medicines. And, um, and hello, Deb, and good morning. Um, natural medicines, I feel, are really important as well. When I was mentioning learning new skills and things and ways that we can be more prepared if things aren't always accessible to us, that is a, a really big one in my eyes. Uh, my healing process process has been all natural, um, through herbs, and um, I've been doing chaga, which is actually a fungus that grows on birch trees. So there are so many different things available to us at our fingertips, and many of us walk past them and don't even know what they are. So plant identification. Um, identifying edible plants, making tinctures and salves, even lip balms. I mean, that's just so huge to be able to do all those things for yourself. I just put a video out there the other day. I think it was yesterday. Um, my husband is a MacGyver, a jack of all trades, and a master of many, and I am so proud of him, and I don't know where we would be without his skills. Everybody is blessed with varying skills, um, unique to each of us. And his is just to have such a mechanical mind. He blows me away how he can just look at something and, and know that it's not going to work the way it's designed or know what needs to be done to repair it or adjust it to make it work. And he does a lot of leather work. He uh, makes knives and, and makes sheaths for the knives and, and sheaths for axes. He does great work. And the um, leather skiver that he was using was only a four inch capacity and it wasn't enabling him to cut the leather the way he needed to and the size leather that he needed to so he actually made his own and they they go range in price from two hundred to four hundred dollars so to be able to make your own things and to prepare and provide for your family in varying ways making your own soaps making your own um, lip balms uh, salves all that stuff is so just so valuable, such valuable uh, knowledge. And I want to encourage you to use these months to do that. And I'm hoping that you will join me at the Trier Wilderness Academy where you will find all those resources. Right now, it's going to be a prog progressive addition to our academy where we are adding all of our videos. We have so many videos and it's very time consuming, 
but I will be diligently working on this and I'm just so excited to get this information out to you because we make our own soaps, we make our own salves, tinctures, you name it and um, we're very well versed on natural medicine. I've been involved uh, in it since I'm 14 but there's so much more to know. I, I have so much to learn and I'm so excited about that because if I'm done learning I, I feel like I will be six feet under. So keep learning guys. It's really important and, and broaden your horizons, broaden your, your scopes of what you know and um, by the way, I will be sharing something very exciting tomorrow on the Facebook page um, in regard to natural medicines and identifying edible plants and such. So I really feel this is really important. Uh, there's so much available to us. I use a lot of dandelion root for varying things. I use chamomile. I use varying roots. I use comfrey. Everything's available to me in my backyard. And I, I dry it, dehydrate it naturally dry it by hanging it upside down in, in paper bags and I have a very large herbal pantry so I encourage you guys to look into that the other thing is essential oils there for a while essential oils were really saturating the internet and it got a little problematic in my eyes because there was a lot of competition a lot of uh, just battling over essential oil companies and it kind of took away from the benefits of the oils themselves. There, I use my oils all the time. Right now I'm combating the mold with uh, On Guard. I do use some of doTERRA's. I also use um, plant therapy and uh, I use quite a variety. So you can find the oils that I use by going to trierwilderness.com slash oils. And if you're looking for knowledge on essential oils, my friend Dr. Eric Zelensky, Dr. Eric Z, Dot com. Um, he has a master class going on right now and I would really encourage you to check it out. He is a really good source, same as Dr. Axe is. They are great websites to check out and peruse for varying natural health remedies and, and um, knowledge. But you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash OE masterclass and, um, and actually <laughs> I don't know if I typed that wrong or not. I think it's EO Masterclass is what it should be for essential oil. So if that link is bad, I will alter that when I get um, out of here. But I, I want to encourage you guys to look into that because being stuck back here, um, you know, it could be scary for some, but we have at our fingertips a lot of resources, um, a lot of skills, a lot of stocked up food, a lot of... Uh, natural medicines so I don't really fear being stuck out here it's just getting out for you know uh, obligations um, that we might have but um, being stuck back here is utopia really so while you're stuck inside these are things to look into and to uh, pursue it's a great time to take classes on on these things um, the other thing is learning how to cook more from scratch I know many of you do um, Today I will be making a uh, pumpkin skillet cake. Uh, I included the recipe down below so you can check that out and that is a family favorite but that's going to go really good with my bacon mule deer roast that's on right now. So, And also that recipe is in my cookbook which you can find by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Tammy Treyer. You'll find my books there. Now. Getting involved in all these skills, and I want to ask you, what are on your, what are some of the things that are on your list that you are wanting to pursue this winter, or that you are pursuing this winter? Share with me, or what are some topics that you want more knowledge on? Um, I would greatly enjoy your uh, input, not just cooking from scratch, but also with different methods. Oh yeah, um, actually, that's one of our classes. We do a lot of uh, open fire cooking. We do uh, solar cooking. We do, I do grill cooking and I do, on, on the grill, I make my breads, I make my pastries, I make cookies, I make pies, uh, you name it. If I can't access something in the home to cook with, I'll cook on my grill. Uh, we cook, like I said, we cook on an open fire, but we hit a really, really dry time between July and August and it gets unsafe to use open fire and actually we're banned from using open fire. So we have to be creative. So that's when I use my sun oven anyway. 
Um, I used to do my jam on the wood stove. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, that's, no, that's using your resource. You're already burning the wood. And, and that's actually what my, my roast is cooking on. If I didn't say that, that's on my wood stove right now. So cooking on your wood stove and, and saving on resources is so wise, so, so wise. I know people that canned on uh, wood stoves. So, and, and I have not taken on that, um, yet, but I hope to. Hi, Dave. Good morning. So some things that I want to talk about is when you're cooking from scratch, using the best ingredients is really important. I want to share a little bit of something with you. We are on a total non-GMO, whole foods, wholesome diet. Um, the Mountain Boy used to be on a dairy-free and a wheat-free, but at 21, he decided to do a little experimenting and see if his body has uh, resolved itself of his um, struggles, and he has actually outgrown his struggles. I got something in my eye, sorry. Um, so he is no longer on the dairy-free and wheat-free, and the kid is so funny. He's like walking through the house, and he'll see something in one of the cupboards and go, oh my gosh, I've, I've never had this before. Can I have some of this? It's just really funny, because he's been so strict that now he can have things with wheat and dairy in it, and he is just, he's besides himself. So it's really funny to watch him, but I totally get his excitement. I am very limited still. There's only like five foods that I can eat safely that I feel comfortable with, um, that I know I'm not going to get sick on. Uh, so, you know, avocados, bone broth, our wild game. Um, I'm, I'm not on any grains or, um, and I try to stay away from beans. So I'm on a, a paleo and a ketogenic diet and the mountain man eats whatever I make for him. He's, he's a good man. So the thing is though, you will find that if you slowly start switching to all non-GMO foods, you will feel better, you will sleep better, you will have less aches and pains, and your body will amazingly start running the way it's supposed to. And I'm going to share this story with you. We had somebody visiting with us, and uh, when they got out here, they continued to eat the same as they have always eaten. His work um, and activity was no different than it always has been and he just started dropping weight in a big way. He lost 60 pounds in a matter of, let's see, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So like eight months. In eight months, he lost 60 pounds. And it wasn't that he was doing anything different, and it wasn't that he was dieting. He was eating non-GMO foods and his body was able to start releasing because what happens with our bodies is that when there are any form of toxins in our bodies, our body shoves it in our fat. Hence, we keep getting heavier because our food is riddled with toxins. And many people will argue that and fight that, but I challenge you to try it. And I'm going to show you what to look for because there are some... Companies that have it written on the label that it's non-GMO, but they are not non-GMO certified. Good morning, Chad. This emblem right here, the blue, I'm going to try to get it closer, the blue non-GMO symbol, that is a certified non-GMO food. Now, I'm going to show you on this one, it is there also, it is the same emblem, it's just in black and white. Okay, but it needs to be certified non-GMO and or certified organic also is a safe food. This is the shortening, the spectrum shortening that I use. Uh, this stuff is fantastic. And again, that is non-GMO. This is my coconut oil that is non-GMO. This is my stevia that is also non-GMO. So what this is my recommendation to you. The things you use most in your kitchen, start replacing one at a time. Because people's biggest complaint is non-GMO and organic foods are expensive. Yes, they are. My health and my livelihood is worth the price. You will also find that you have less medical bills because you are eating better and, and you are going to heal your body once you start releasing it from all these GMOs and the toxins and getting all that garbage out of your body. Now, the other thing you can look for 
is the USDA organic symbol. Now, the question that was given to me is how do you find these non-GMO foods? How do you find, um, you know, how do you know what to start replacing? Your, what, what is a good replacement for what you're currently using? There are a bunch of resources that you can find non-GMO foods very inexpensively. I find my ketchup and my peanut butter, my Earth Balance peanut butter um, at Thrive Market. So you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash Thrive Market. If I can't find it there or I don't like the price there, which is usually not the case, I will go to Amazon Prime and see what I can find there. Now there is a Prime Pantry. So you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash Prime Pantry and you will be introduced to their Prime Pantry which you when you use Amazon Prime you get discounted rates on shipping and and different uh, products. Prime Pantry is actually food and you get charged, I think it's $5.95 to ship your order and they calculate it by weight. Okay, Chad, no worries. I'll catch up with you later and thank you for the inspiration this morning and um, sharing your message with me. That really made my day. Um, so... Going to Prime Pantry, it enables you, like for us, we can't necessarily get out of here. We have to get our um, snowmobile running. We have a sled for the back of the snowmobile. So I can order from Prime Pantry. I can have the UPS driver meet me at the end of our mile and a quarter lane, and we can meet up with him, and this is what we've done in the past, meet him with the snowmobile and the sled and bring our stuff back here. So, you know, I can order from there. I may not be able to get to the grocery store, and unfortunately, our local grocery store does not have a lot of non-GMO foods, so that makes it really hard for me. That's why we stock up on our food and also purchase in bulk. So that's the other way that you can get your non-GMO foods inexpensively. Walmart is another great resource, guys. Walmart has been adding a lot of um, non-GMO foods. Your snacky foods, if you like potato chips or you like nachos, you go look for that non-GMO um, emblem and and you will be able to get um, our nachos that we purchase there are $1.98 a bag in our local town. And granted, you know, it's 3,000 people. It's They don't order the volume that Walmart does. Um, I'm looking at $4.98 a bag. So yes, it's expensive. So you've got to shop around. You've got to do your homework. You've got to do your research and find out where close to you you can find these foods inexpensively. And you might have to shop different places. We have two grocery stores in our biggest town here and I can't get everything I need at one store. I have to go to both stores occasionally to get things. And you can ask your local stores to get things in for you. Um, often asking them to get it in by the case will be less expensive. Um, we use Earth Balance Butter and I can't get that locally anywhere. I have to go an hour to get it. So I order it by the case, and that is $82 a case. But I don't have to make the trip, and I can get it by the case and keep it on hand. Grow it and make it yourself makes for a cheaper GMOA. Absolutely. Absolutely, Jill. And that's the thing. The more we learn, the more we research, the more we do ourselves, the better off, the less expensive things will be. I encourage you to go to our website and... Um, Search well. Actually, you can look under our team, and you will find um, that's under the Begin Here tab. And then you can look under our team, and you can click on Michelle Hedgecock, who is my everyday assistant. I love her to death, and she's also one of our contributing writers. And she has written some really great posts on saving money. And um, today's post that actually went live. If you go to treyerwilderness.com, you will see it. That's the first post that shows up is um, saving money um, with food. So she's got a lot of great resources in there and a lot of great links, so I encourage you to check that out also. But that's the thing. The more we do for ourselves, the more we can save money. The stevia, I grew stevia two years ago, and I have stevia downstairs. And nope, it just stopped on me. I need to take a drink here, guys. Share with me some of the things you want to learn and what you're learning right now. And if you guys are watching this after the fact, please share. I see the comments, and if you're on YouTube, leave it in the comments. I will see your your messages. And forgive me if I have not 
been replying to them. I see them. I just can't keep up with replying to everything right now and getting the academy out there. So forgive me. I'm doing my best. Say some prayers for me and keep cheering me on because I've got a I got a lot to do. Now, getting flowers is uh, starch is one of the biggest things that converts converts to sugar. That also causes us to. Um, gain weight, have stomach issues sometimes if you have a lot of candida in your body. So one of the things that I recommend um, is a sprouted flour. I use better batter flour also, which is gluten-free. This is one I'm trying. This is To Your Health, and it's a uh, sprouted, sprouted flour company. And um, this blend is a little different for me. It's got a different consistency and taste to it. So I'm not sure on this one yet, so I may try another one of theirs. But um, you can also sprout your own flowers. Sprout your own, um, like Jill said, do it yourself. I've got a lot of wheat berries. You can sprout your wheat berries and you can um, grind them, you know, dry them and grind them and make your own flowers. Um, a sprouted flower is... Um, it is easier to digest and um, so much better for you. I try to I stay away from white flowers. I have not used a white flower in a long, long time. I use a whole wheat flour. Um, Azure Standard is another company that I highly recommend that you check out, and that's A-Z-U-R-E Standard. Um, they have you can purchase off of their website. They also have a lo local drop spots, and I highly recommend them as well. They have a lot of organic, um, non-GMO foods that you can purchase in bulk, and their prices are great. That's where I get a lot of my flowers. I get my wheat berries. I get my beans. Um, I get my rices. Winco is another company for those of us in the Pacific Northwest. They have been starting to carry a lot more non-GMO foods. So... The thing is to look for the non-GMO foods in your market. There is a company out of Montana that makes flowers, and for the life of me right now, I can't think of it. I, I'm not sure if it's Montana flower or not. I will look that up and put that in the description later. Um, I'm not sure how far of a reach they have right now either, but check your local stores to see what kind of non-GMO flour they have and go from there. Like I said, you can get a lot. Of, I do a lot of my shopping on Amazon because I get free shipping. So flour, I purchase 25, 50, 100 pounds of flour at a time depending on the time of year. How long is our growing season? Our growing season is very, very short. It is... Um, <laughs> our winters go very long. Our first year here, we've got frost and snow the first week in July. Um, our snow can set, and that same year, our, our snow set in in September. So July, August, September, so we've got a very short period. I've yet to grow red tomatoes. I've gotten a lot of green tomatoes on the vine, but they have not turned when the time comes. And we do have hoops, but we just haven't been able to get... Uh, good red tomatoes. So our season is very short here. We are in five, but what's really, zone five, what's really crazy here is we are in this little draw and, you know, we might have got 24 inches of snow and out on the county road a mile and a quarter away, they may have only gotten a foot of snow. Uh, we hold the moisture back here pretty good. We hold the water, the snow, and the seasons seem to last longer back here. So it's it's pretty interesting because about uh, six miles from here, there is a woman who has an organic um, garden. She's a very beautiful garden. And just that difference in, in the mileage, six miles, and she is just has such a different climate right there. So it can really make a difference depending where you're located. Oh, awesome. Jill said she already has kale coming up. Good for you. Yeah, our garden is under 24 inches of snow right now. I need to get it fertilized also really good. I'd like to get some horse and cow manure back here. Whoa, there goes my stool again. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to have to step off of here and adjust. There's a button. It's poorly designed. It's right where my legs go, and if I hit it, I end up like come crashing down. It's like one of the rides at the amusement parks. <laughs> So anyway, there was your humor and laugh for the day. By the way, how many of you went back after um, the uh, Facebook Live last week and watched Candace Payne's little video I put in the comments? Is that not the best? I love it. I love her, and I'm really excited. Um, 
not sure if I'm supposed to mention this yet or not. I'll have a, I'm not going to yet. I, I better wait because I'm not sure if I'm supposed to tell. So maybe next week I'll share some exciting news with you. Um, so anyway, the suspense of it all. So that is my suggestion is to start slowly because of the expense and some people just can't afford to go completely non-GMO right off the bat. That's the best way to do it is just to dive in. When your pantry's low, just start converting to non-GMO. But if you can't afford to do that, start converting slowly and and convert using the, the most the things you use the most in your home everything guys milk um, has hormones and and something else to keep in mind is whatever the animal is eating you will then be ingesting so if the chicken is eating GMO foods you are eating GMOs when you eat their eggs or when you eat the chicken um, if they're being given hormones you're eating the hormones so, and I'm going to tell you something. We butchered some of our older chickens a couple weeks ago. And my husband did a video on it. And I'll tell you what, I could not believe the fat on those chickens. And oh my gosh, we made a chicken and I utilized that broth for like three different things. And it was so thick and so yellow. Oh my goodness, it was so good. So when you have that wholesome food that you're intaking, you will be just so amazed at how much better things taste and how much better you feel. But um, keep that in mind. You know, you're purchasing your meats from the grocery store. I can't tell you the last time I did that. I'd be scared to death to do that because when I eat anything that has GMOs in it, I am sick and oftentimes flat on my back for four or five days till it processes through my system. And that is just awful. And that's what will happen when you finally get rid of all the GMOs in your body. That is what you're going to experience. So for those of you that are wanting to find healthier choices, stay away from your white flowers. Um, go for your grainy and, and your sprouted flowers. Um, start incorporating some type of an acidophilus or a uh, probiotic into your uh, diet. Um, you can do that by ma learning how to make uh, water or milk kefir, as well as making kombucha. I have videos on, at least the kombucha is live on our YouTube channel. Um, I'm not sure if I did the one on the kefir yet, but I actually have uh, some kefir that I'm going to be starting. Also sourdough. Sourdough, anytime you have the um, good bacteria and the enzymes, that will help with your stomach and help get rid of any of the garbage that you have in there. There's a good chance that from all the GMOs you have a good case of candida and that will help break things up and get the good stomach bacteria count back up in your digestive system because the GMOs actually kill that. So just some other pointers. Um, I think that covers everything for today. We can touch more on that. But I wanted to give you, I also put some encouraging words in the description below. And um, this is one of my favorite verses, uh, James 1, 2 through 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I just love that verse. That verse is like um, such major empowerment for me. I don't even know how to, I, um, the visual, okay, for you women, you guys will laugh, but for you women, it's like the um, Demi Moore or the Angelina Jolie holding the gun and being totally like jacked up. You know, that's the empowerment I get from that verse. And I, just, I know that's a funny visual, but it just really empowers me because I know that when I am going through the storms and through the valleys and through the hard, um, I am able to feel really empowered by that Bible verse. Hi, Mama T. <laughs> so take that into consideration. Um, I know we've been talking all year long about living with intention, being true to Jesus, being true to ourselves and working through our struggles. And sometimes I'm preaching to the choir on that. I have been editing videos and I've been getting, I've been a little behind getting these Facebook Live videos onto YouTube. And um, it's been pretty awesome editing my own videos and listening to them again. And sometimes I blow myself away the things I say in that they, they are really encouraging to myself sometimes. And I need to, I need to hear those things and I need to sometimes be my my biggest cheerleader when when things are going crazy and I know that that's the same for you guys too so you know 
we all go through the ups and downs. We all, throw, all go through the storms. We all, you know, life isn't a bowl of cherries. It's not going to be good every day. And if you really look at your, your weeks, it's up and down and up and down. And it's pretty crazy. It's quite the roller coaster ride. But when you can hold on to such things as, as, as that verse, James 1, 2 through 4, <laughs> I love you too, Mom. These, these verses are the things that hang on to us. People in our lives are the things that help us progress and, and work through these hard times. And Chad messaged me this morning to share with me how, for him, listening to one of my videos that he watched live with me here, but also then watched on YouTube again, um, made him realize it really made something stand out to him this morning, and he had messaged me about it. And, you know, it's really awesome. We all have the ability to inspire and build on other people, and we got to focus on that because um, every day is going to be a, a different challenge of one sort or another. I ended up flat on my back, and I will be very honest, I was in an extremely low place Saturday and Sunday, a place I haven't been in years, and it was just a result of the mold messing with my head. And, and for those of you that have ever dealt with mold exposure, um, it can be pretty darn harsh. And I was, I just couldn't, I knew that there was something chemically off in my system because I'm not there. I'm not usually there. I'm usually the happy-go-lucky person you see here. And it's really hard when we hit those spots. So find words of encouragement. Like I told you before, I showed you my, my chalkboard that has words of encouragement to myself. You know, remind ourselves, remind yourself what you need to hear sometimes and it's important having those things around those resources the other thing that um stood out to me is psalms 107 8 let them praise the lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them you know he's always doing good things there's always blessings in the storm so just remember that as you're traveling through your days and through your weeks and something else that i wanted to point out and i think this is so cool and i think you guys because i know I know my man struggles with this sometimes. Um, we all kind of uh, wonder what our purpose is on this earth, right? And I really feel confident that I'm, I'm on the right path for that. Uh, I really feel God has guided me, and I feel so blessed with that, with my writing and my uh, educating and my teaching. And the mountain man has struggled with that, and his recent videos have been really good for him to see that he, too, is on the right path. The man is so gifted. Um, with his abilities to uh, MacGyver things and create things and build things. It's just such an amazing talent and gift and to see the things the way he does. But also to know that he's reaching people through his education and through what he shares. So I want to encourage you guys to pray that if you if you don't know what your purpose is, that you pray for him to share it with you because um, it's a really neat place to get to um, when you really have that confidence that you're where you're supposed to be, regardless of the storm you're going through. Because right now we're going through a storm, but we just feel like God has us where we're supposed to be for whatever reason, whatever purpose. So you keep striving on. But the Bible verse is Habakkuk 3.19. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me sure-footed as a deer, able to tread upon the heights. And he does. He gives us our strength when we need it. And and he is what makes me sure-footed. And he is what makes me be able to do what I do and gives me the strength to do what I do. And I'm, I'm just grateful to know that I am reaching people um, through comments and, and uh, people reaching out to me. I know my videos might be long on these Facebook Lives, but I really feel that I am uh, nudged to educate on certain things every week, and that's been pretty awesome, too. So, guys, I'm just going to say a quick prayer for you all for the week, and we will move along with our days. So, dear Jesus, I just thank you for this opportunity to be in front of these friends. Lord, just bless them this week. Give them strength. Help them through their struggles. Help them with their medical conditions and, and their health. And Lord, just help them to find you and see you and find their joy and their happiness and to live with intention and, and be true to themselves and uh, research and find things and, and learn things and become more prepared and, and focused on things that they want to learn to do and where they might find their joy and lord just thank you again for this opportunity and just bless all of them and lord just uh guide us all and we ask this in jesus precious name amen so guys 
Thank you so much. Your time is just as precious as mine. I love you all. I'm so thankful to have you joining me. And spread the word, share the video, and go do some research. Go do something new. Go do something fun. And be happy and find your joy and your peace through it all. And you guys take care. Have a great day. I will see you next Wednesday at 1030. God bless.